Good Good evening, everybody. We're getting a little organized here, so. Um, so John is coming. John is coming. Oh, wait for now. And then Howard was going to come. Did you guys hear from Howard? I have not heard from him at all, so I don't know. Right. He didn't say he wasn't coming. Okay, we'll get started and then we finish. We have representation. Yep. Is this supposed to? Thank you. <laughs> all right. <laughs> It's been a long day of work, so I just need to. If I, if I actually lapse into, if I lapse into a, just one. Okay. How's the roundabout looking these days, Gilbert? Which roundabout? Is it beautiful? <laughs> well, it depends on who you are. Uh, those people who believe in the rural rustic look, natural look, it's quite nice. And those who believe in the golf course look, it's awful. So you need to figure out where you are on the spectrum of golf course world or rural rustic. World. Yes. Okay, so this is our tri board meeting. Um, schools here, finance committees here, select boards here. Um, first thing we had talked about wanting to talk about this um, this tri board was our proposed uh, agenda for the next year, calendar and schedule for financial stuff. And we have that in our books. And did you guys? Was email well, it was actually emailed out, wasn't it? Yeah, the five year budget forecast is all there. Yeah, five year budget forecast, that's it. Yeah, well, here's extra copies right here. This was the uh, sent out quite a while ago, a couple weeks ago. Thank you. Maybe more like half a month ago. Oh, I don't know how long. How did you get it? Just make sure I have the right one. Yeah, I think it's just missing the cover. The one in our book is just missing the cover sheet to that. Okay, so... Um, do you need uh, your missing information in the book? No. It, it's just as nice. I see. So does everybody read that? People... Does anybody have any comments or... Concerns you want to add, or did, did you guys receive the copy of this? Yes, we have the we have the five year Yes. Okay. Uh, are we looking at the calendar, or are we looking at the five year plan? Because everybody seems to have something different. In front We're of looking you. at the calendar, which is the last page. Oh, the last page. Well, I'll jump in. Go ahead. Uh, the uh, um, Molly Keegan pre prepared this and presented this uh, to us a while ago, and I think they prefaced it by saying that this is a draft mm -hmm. and that it may be ambitious. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, looking at the um, projects that we have aligned for ourselves for July and August of this of this year, um, it probably is very ambitious uh, for us to do anything other than. Um, keep uh, basic functions uh, going throughout the asbestos project. So what I'm referring to is we're taking up the floor in this building on both levels to dispose of the vinyl asbestos tile and replace it with another floor. We're moving all of Town Hall over to the public safety complex for a two or three week period from July 10th to August 1st. Uh, and we're going to set up the satellite town hall over there. This is actually part of our emergency continuity of operation plans in case of an emergency. We could set up the town hall somewhere else in case of some sort of natural or human disaster. Um, so we thought that we would use this as an opportunity to exercise that emergency continuity of emer uh, operations plan in a non-emergency situation, but it's still going to take a fair amount of work for us to move, pack up everything, move it, up, move it over, set up shop, be able to provide customers to the town hall with a full range of services and then return here. So bearing that in mind, I think that this is a very doable plan uh, if we move towards it. So we had talked about doing this, uh, having our conversation today uh, in terms of a process of how do we achieve this <coughs> at some point. But maybe not sticking with the calendar as it's laid out. 
Right. Possibly. I mean, but, yeah. You know, just because this year is not going to be a good year doesn't mean that next year this calendar wouldn't be just fine. But how do we get there from here? I think mm -hmm. is the way I see it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I guess what I would say is I don't I don't see how we can go into another budget cycle without doing some of the things that are laid out in here. Um, you know, and, and as I had said when I presented it, I knew it was um, relatively am ambitious, but. I don't necessarily think we should back away from uh, the concepts here in terms of, I don't, I don't think we can wait a whole year um, mm -hmm. to have discussion with department heads about their short-term and long-term goals. I and mean, I think that, that that absolutely has to happen. Um, if it doesn't happen in you know July and it happens in August or the early part of September, so be it. But um, not too far into the budget. Right. I think we have to do the capital because mm -hmm. we we, had, we told people we were going to be doing a capital plan with the police and mm -hmm. fire and other people who came to us with requests and we said that we would be coordinating a capital plan before fall town meeting. So that that I don't think that can be delayed for too long. Right. And uh, where we are with that is I've sent out the capital requests uh, uh, forms earlier last week with a due date of August 3rd. So that capital planning process is turning in one right now. But well, we already have a capital plan. We have a capital plan that was put together by department heads who are no longer here. We had a, we had, we've had major changes in our leadership uh, for the school, for DPW, for the, the police, and the capital item requests that were presented by the former department heads are not supported by the uh, current department heads, so um, it, it needs to be redone, basically, that's what I'm saying. And we, and we have a huge backlog, stuff that wasn't purchased or it was planned, but we didn't purchase it in the year as planned. So if you look at the capital plan, there's this huge, huge pile of stuff we want to buy in 16, and then it spreads out over the next few years. And obviously, we can't do all that. Mm -hmm. Well, and also, sure. like, for example, the police chief told the capital committee that there are things on that capital plan that he no longer supports. So mm -hmm. right. um, it, it's, it's not really valid. And so can I ask where the, IT plan stands in relation to the capital plan because that should definitely be combined. Right. So I uh, have been working with IT providers to come up with a long-term plan for going to the uh, to the, the goal of having uh, cloud-based uh, uh, computers, upgrades of everything, so that we have we a, a deal with a lot of the connectivity issues that we've been having problems with in town hall. And, uh, and other places be upgrading our, our physical um, uh, plant for computers and see getting it to cloud-based computers so we can actually do programs. Um, so is that whoever you're working with, are they putting together a, a strategic plan? So yes. if in the meantime people need equipment, they're buying the right equipment? And right, we have, we have, we have the 25,000 for immediate needs that will be uh, applied to known problems with computers that we discussed during the budget cycle, as well as upgrading the network that we have here in Town Hall while we're redoing all the flooring here. So that, that money is immediately available. We'll be making further requests uh, and presenting out. No, I understand the money's available, but I just hope that it's being spent in, in the uh, Context of a plan. In the context of a plan, right. so that we're because we have been spending money, but it's just that mm -hmm. not, none of it works together. Yeah, we don't want it to be a throwaway. Right, right. Yeah. Is there a date for when the plan will be done? The IT plan? Uh, August uh, 3rd with the, the rest of the capital plan. So, is the idea that the capital committee gets involved at that point? Or yeah. what is the. How does this work? Well, I would also think that before the capital committee even gets involved, that there should be some actual, you know, high-level review of the IT plan itself to make sure that. Right. I mean, I mean I've been, I'm sure you have too. I mean, you go through a number of these things, and sometimes what the vendor puts together, which is based on what they think they heard from the department heads and the like, may not be 
taking everything into account in terms of strategic objectives yeah, I guess of the leadership. How someone's so. putting together a plan, do they have financial parameters or uh, a timeline? Or I'm just wondering how. They have a t I think they have a timeline is all we have right now. Okay. So there's really, so the IT provider is supposed to come up with a plan by August 3rd, but mm -hmm. the last plan we got actually no one had any financial numbers in it. If you look at the final, mm -hmm. the bottom number, it's huge. Mm -hmm. um, but I, and I think what Lynn's getting at is Where's the needs analysis that's going to drive the IT plan that the vendor's putting together? Because vendors typically are responding to a business need. Right. So has that business need been completely pulled together and vetted before the vendor even Yeah, we put together it? a document that says what our goals are and what our timeline is and what our, you know, you know, arrange for a budget. Or I, I don't think so because okay. that's what I asked for a couple of times and, it, and I we think didn't have something yeah. like that, right? Yeah, we're working towards that. So, so is, is there more than one provider that looks at this project? Right now we have the, the provider that's just down the street and working with a, uh, an outfit out of Greenfield. Uh, so I'm trying to do a little bit of shopping to see what kind of services they can provide. There's also, you know, there's the usual technical debate over which way to go. Do you want to have a hard server? Do you want to go cloud-based? Uh, I'm not going to get into those kinds of discussions because it's beyond my, my ken, frankly. But yeah, another good reason to talk to more than one, I guess, from different experiences. So is there an IT, is there like an IT subcommittee or something? I know that the well, the schools have one now, right? Don't you guys have an IT task force like Jack Sykowski and some people? But with technology? Yeah. 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 yeah I'm sorry, it's yeah. IT, but like a right, yeah, yeah. school-based technology. Right. right. But. It, it does seem like for the amount of dollars that are likely involved, we should have some some committee comprised of people who may have a little bit of experience with this stuff put together to, to help work through so that we're not, you know, they, they spend all this time and effort and then in the space of four questions getting asked, you can wind up throwing the whole thing out the window. So, so actually listening to everything we just said, it sounds like we really, we can slow down a little bit, but we really shouldn't slow down too much. If we're gonna have the capital plan come in on August 3rd, then we need to have a discussion with at least the two big departments, the biggest departments we have, maybe the school as well, as, as where they're going, and then work in the IT part, because the IT part, IT and the three, well, I would say four, but we don't have a DPW director right now. We're still hiring a DPW director. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe we need to actually push forward those four items, IT, IT plan, if we want IT task force to work on that, and then interviews with the police chief, fire chief, to see what their plans are and their goals are, and then a little discussion with the school where they're, they're planning to go if they're ready to to have that discussion, maybe. Because those are our, except for DPW, those are our big big money users in the budget. Well, we already know the school needs a bus that we put off in the spring. Um, so, so they have a pretty big ask. It's not a parking lot, but it's in terrible conditions. We, we actually don't it's know the very much. We actually don't know very much about the capital needs of the school, and so that's something that we need to mm -hmm. work together this summer. Is that uh, uh, you have you have a number of capital needs, and they're they're simply not on our radar at this point. And you know, I guess the, the an issue I have though is that, and I completely agree with the whole capital thing. We, we now. Is, Time to take a step back and do it, kind of, kind of redo the whole thing. Um, but again, typically you're doing that in the context of some sort of a plan. So, in the absence of actually sitting down department by department and saying, I'm just take DPW as an example. And I know we don't have the the DPW DPW director in place right now, but but just for the sake of argument. Um, you know, looking at, uh, let's say that concerns are raised about the infrastructure, what is water, sewer. Um, there may be some 
decisions that need to be made relative to, you know, are we looking at eventually expanding the sewer infrastructure? I'm just throwing this out. Um, if the answer to that qu question is yes, that may start you down a path of expenditures that is different than if the answer to that question is no, we really don't have an infrastructure problem with the sewer. So I'm a little bit reluctant to dive into the capital plan as much as it's necessary um, and, and forego some of that other critical departmental discussion. And, and I, I, of course, Nirvana, I want my cake and I'd like to eat it too right now. And I know we don't have the luxury of time, but I think that at least at some sort of 5,000 foot level, we really need to sit with the department heads and hear what they're thinking. And in all likelihood, the outcome of that will be, yes, there's a lot more work to do, but at least we've got a couple of critical points that we're all aware of and we're driving towards so that when that capital plan's put together, you're not forgetting about those influences over here. Is that everybody in the same room or independently? I think it's independently. I think it can be independently at first, and then in all likelihood there are going to be some codependencies. Like police and fire may may have some codependencies. Yeah. Well, I also Space. think it's good for everyone to hear what everyone else needs, and so that when you have to prioritize <coughs> things or the capital committee, you know, there can be some sort of understanding by all of the departments what the needs are. And um, if everybody comes back with a budget of a quarter of a million dollars, and you have a quarter of a mil million dollars for the four departments, I think it's important for them to hear what the needs are from the, in the same room where they can understand, you know, the, the job that we have and the finance committee has mm -hmm. and the school has by prioritizing and getting these things done. So, especially in the fact that you said the needs have not been met specifically in the last few years. So, you know, it's getting to, it's coming to a head with what needs to be spent and where it needs to be spent. So you said exactly what I thought I was saying which we have to, if we're going to do it, we have to look at that 5,000 5, foot level and do the capital plan at the same time or decide we're just engaging one piece and just doing one piece, the 5,000 level look, and then coming back and doing the capital plan. But I don't think we have, like you say, there's no luxury to do everything in the time period we'd like to do it. We're gonna have to like kind of come together. And as a department head in another community, um, yes, it's important to hear what everybody else wants, but it's important to give a department head 100% of his attention. We don't want to have police, fire, DPW, and town hall all in the same room trying to tell you what their needs are at one time. You need to listen to them individually, let them show you things that they want to show you things, let them talk about their department so they feel they're getting it across to you and not like they're being pushed out by the school department because the school department can talk better than they can. Or, or, so. We have to break it down, I think, and have individual discussions with each department about their 5,000 foot level and their plan, and then come back together if we want to do it that way, is how I would. Well, can I, go ahead, just. Well, the pot of money comes from, and that's what it all boils down to. There's no way of getting around the needs list, it's money. So that's why things are at a stalemate, because you don't always have money for certain expenditures, and we have a capital, um, plan, we have capital money that's coming in from um, sales yeah. Yeah, sales tax. So I mean that's being used specifically for some capital, but that's not a whole lot of money. That may be a quarter million dollars each year, maybe a little bit more. But you can we have other ways of offsetting sewer by the sewer department and water department. So I mean you got a couple of different pots there for those, but not for the rest of the town. And it's you know, it all again boils down to prioritizing what the needs are. So here's our plug for the neighbors, uh, residents of Hadley, please eat in town. Eat in town, pull up our meals tax. <laughs> I just want to, the second bullet that is on this June, um, the proposed June schedule is a department head meeting to discuss requests for deliverables, short and long-term departmental goals, staffing needs, capital needs, other budgetary issues, and a SWOT analysis, which is a, you know, strengths, weaknesses sort of thing. Um, I am sure people look, um, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats. It's kind of just a standard management practice of taking a look at your house, so to speak, and figuring out you know, what's going well, what's not going so well, and what might be coming down the pike, so to speak. 
Um, I recognize that that might be certainly too aggressive to expect people to do um, an extremely diligent, detailed um, for June. production of, of that by department for, for June. But on the other hand, Guilford, to, to Jerry's point, one of the issues that I think we agreed on, or at least was articulated at the last meeting, is I do think that sometimes there's some communication issues. And I worry that if right out of the gate we're going off into silos kind of one by one, mm -hmm. I think if everybody was in the room at least to hear the direction and the same thing at the same time just to kick it off, I do think that that would be helpful. And then to your point, I can understand, I, I agree with you that people don't get enough time to really talk through their stuff. Yeah, police and fire are just demanding all the time. Mm -hmm. So they always really get more discussion time. So. In days of old, uh, when finance came up, there was a meeting where the department heads, uh, when budgeting was being talked about, the, the, everybody sat down with the department heads, uh, and then they spoke with the finance committee independently from that. But it was kind of an overall, here's the picture, here's what's coming up, here's what's available. Um, you know, we're beginning the budget process, go back, put your needs together, and let's, <clears throat> let's have the meetings now. But it was kind of a come to Jesus meeting that said, you know, here's what we're looking at for cherry sheet numbers, and realistically, this is what we have available for monies this year, so come back with a realistic budget that we can work on. And then independently, they met independently with the Finance Committee. So, I agree. So here we are halfway through the month of June. Would we want to do something on the 17th or wait until our first meeting of July to have you know, maybe have them come together or maybe we have them go to one of their meetings and present what we're looking for. Who's there? Who's there with us? The department heads. Work on to their meeting? Well, yeah, whichever one works out best for our timeline. Mm -hmm. When do they have their department meetings? Our department had meetings for the first Wednesday of every month at 11 o'clock in this room. And I don't, I don't know that, I mean, I think from a logistics standpoint, it might be it would certainly be easier for them to do that. I just worry about sufficient time being allowed for what we really need to get through. Yeah, we'll be talking a lot about asbestos at that meeting. And so you, you were telling me that first meeting's already pretty much dedicated to the move. So, um, you know, I mean, I would, I would think ideally if we could have it here, even if it's like another six o'clock or something, at, you know, add on to a regular select board meeting. Over here. Oh. Well, it doesn't have, we could find a date that works. Like Guilford's saying, we're already a good chunk of the way through June. A one week's notice may or may not be sufficient for the department heads to make time. I don't know. And do we, well, so I guess we, we're saying we're gonna have to push this back a little bit. And do we agree we'll have a kickoff meeting with the department heads, give them time, schedule a, meeting during the week for a group of us, or all of us, that haven't come to a select board meeting. Mm -hmm. Are you including the schools? Yeah. We're one town. I know. We only got one budget. And another, from an organizational standpoint, do we want to treat this like a project and have a point person coordinating all of this, or do you want to do it via a subcommittee, or do you want to just see how it goes? See how it goes is kind of, I don't think is going to go that well. So do we make another subcommittee, or do we just do a private person? What would that point person be responsible for? Making sure, well, the project plan, and then just asking for, pe for people to have, you know, so if you imagine uh, there's certain deliverables that we say, you know, we want these five things or whatever, just coordinating it to make sure that whoever's responsible for doing the delivering um, gets the stuff in on time, or if it's going to fall behind, that people are aware that it's falling behind. It's just that kind of thing. It's really just a coordination role, not one of any authority, so to speak, in terms of telling people what to do. It's just a coordination. That's what I'm thinking. I'm waiting for somebody else to jump in. I, I'm kind of lost on what this meeting, the point of this meeting, I guess. Yeah. So is it the second bullet under June, organizational focus? Yep. 
But I guess we've decided that we want to tell all the department heads at one time this is what we want to do. What are you going to tell them, I guess? So you're going to tell them what the financial situation is in the town no. or what you're at? What that, you're... We're, that we're going to schedule meetings to talk to meet with them and talk about their strengths, weaknesses, and OTs. opportunities. Capital needs and budgetary issues. Yeah. So do you expect them to come to this meeting with those? No, 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 no. 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 This uh, is just this a direct, kick off meeting. The direction. Okay. Like a better word is probably a kickoff okay. meeting to this discussion. Okay. And then the point person would schedule up follow-on meetings to have them come and make those presentations then. And, and they are thinking July for this? Thinking I just want to know what I'm going to tell people what they have to depending do. On Okay, depending on what the situation is. Yeah, we'll forget we're not here in July. Our town hall is closed. Yeah, we only yeah. really have two You're not meetings meeting in July? In July? Not, not here. here. Just across the road. Yeah, two meetings in July. So um, the suggestion might be to try to meet with the department heads on the July 1st department head meeting. We usually have an agenda which is basically in two halves, one of which is uh, an agenda of business items and then we do departmental check-ins where we could do a round robin around the, the, the table just talk about what's happening in our departments and seeing if there's any kind of, um, of uh, information that needs to be shared across the table. Uh, perhaps we could dispense with that second part or defer that second part and we can do the agenda items and then this could be the other half of the meeting would be a presentation of the calendar. Just a touch concern that the first week of July that you're not going to have a lot of department heads around. It's only fourth weekend because we get Friday, I get Friday off, don't they? Yeah. They do. So if we have a meeting on the first, which is Wednesday, me and me and we're heading heading out for a long weekend, so it might be true. So do we Can you have it the week before? The last week of June? What about the eighth? Well, do we do we move our meeting to the eighth? I thought this was um, okay now I'm really confused. The select board meeting to the day? This is a department head meeting. This is during the day, right? Well, we could. Actually, we could have the If we do a top small task force, or we do a kick, uh, point person, that person could meet and it could be scheduled at any time mm -hmm. for the kickoff meeting. Right. Right. Yes. Yeah. That makes more sense to me <laughs> in terms of getting people that are able to come. Because you don't really need all of us here. For kick up, you really need the people that are going to be doing the analysis. Exactly. You do have a, you do have said the tri board meeting on the first. Yeah, we're changing that. Mm -hmm. yeah, just making my head swim. <laughs> <laughs> with dates. So we have uh, two options. What what do people prefer? Well, can somebody, can, is somebody available to go to the department head meeting that Wednesday morning and touch base with the department head people and give them a heads up at that point? I can't say. So Molly's available to do that? Is that good with everybody? I think it's a fabulous Would you like idea. Backup? You can do it. Would you like it's backup? Fabulous. It's your inception. So. Distraction team. Yeah. Did you want to help with that or you also? Yeah. Fine, fine with me, yep. Okay, be there too. Yes. Does anybody what, what day are you, are you talking July 1st still? Yeah, are we talking the, the first of the department the head meeting in the morning they're going. So we, are we talking about to the first To kick it off with them. Yeah. Right, 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 I'm just confused today because the said July 1st was not a good time, but now it is July 1st, right? Well, they won't, can't come at night. Right, right, no, I'm not. No, well, I'm how, about, how about we do this? Why don't we get find out availability for July 1st? If we could. Who's going to be in town? Yeah, right. who's. Planning on attending that meeting? Yeah, and I think everybody's going to be here. I think the only person who said that they may have a conflict was uh, Council on Aging, but uh, okay. we can we can have a representative sure. over there. And the, the the first can work if we change the agenda. That's oh. what I was saying. We can create more time with the agenda. So, the goal of the kickoff meeting is to talk about. Do you want me to fill in the blank? Or sure. Okay. <laughs> the goal of the kickoff meeting is to 
talk to the department heads and um, tell them some of the issues that the select board has discussed and that have been discussed at tri-board relative to um, how we think that the, the budget process and the planning process needs to be enhanced um, going forward, that we find their input extremely valuable. We'd like them involved at the inception of the process, not taking a handoff halfway down the road. Um, and to that end, what we're really looking for is we want to go into listening mode for the first part of the process to hear what issues they have. Again, you know, to talk a little bit about the concept of a SWOT analysis um, and allow for the fact that there are many, many, many other things going on over the next couple of months, but this is a great opportunity to get this budget cycle kicked off right. And to that end, here are the things that we would like them to provide and that we will be scheduling meetings with them on a much more focused and individualized basis as soon as practicable, um, ultimately coming together again in time for the first pass uh, at the budget later on this year. And that's the gist of it, I think. Does everybody agree? Mm -hmm. I do, which is basically outlined in bullet point number two of the June schedule. Mm -hmm. so the one thing I would add to that is that we do need to as some we do need to do the capital plan at the same time we're doing this. So mm -hmm. as, as we take our time doing this, we still have to make the capital schedule work in this schedule because we still have to make fall town meeting to make some decisions. Mm -hmm. And the capital stuff already went out, right, David? Didn't you say? Yeah, so the, the, the requests for the capital mm -hmm. have gone out to all the departments at this point. And August 3rd, the return is when you're looking for that. And in July, I'll be meeting with each of the departments to uh, make sure that they have a complete uh, capital uh, request for the five year period. And then the capital committee will get involved after. Right. <laughs> Okay. So, as, as we talk about the schedule here, that's going to probably take a lot of July and part of August to do. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna, we're pushing some things out of the schedule here that we kind of talked about. Is there anything else we want to try to accomplish in that time period of these items in the schedule, or do we want to just reevaluate the schedule and come back and talk about a little? I would be happy to try to commit this into more of a, pro a true project timeline format, with you know um, resources required and deliverables and actual calendar dates, and. With this in mind, you know, with the move in mind, maybe I could spend a little bit more time with David finding out exactly what the details are. I was, I was going to suggest yeah. that maybe it would be most productive if you and I mm -hmm. sat down and typed all of this out in sure. terms of what does it look like logistically. Well, that would be specific for 15 back in 16 when we're back in this building. You'd like to use this as a format, correct? Correct, unless it okay. doesn't work or, you know, okay. might wind up tweaking it as we go along. You think might be a lot to Yep. It's just, just want to finish up a thought on the uh, capital. So August 3rd, capital budgets are due back to May. September 30th, the capital committee should have finished their review in time for the fall town meeting uh, uh, for it. So that gives two months. Right. Two so months between August work. 3rd and we'll have to have, I mean, John, you're on the capital thing, right? We'll have to have the department heads come in and talk about. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. And there shouldn't be any surprises, though, because as the tribe board starts to talk about them, as the needs are specific to this year and brought forward and, and rectified, there won't be any big surprises, I don't think, when it, by the time it gets to you, the capital planning committee because it had already been vetted through this organization. Well, will we be at that stage by August 3rd, where people are... August 30th, no, August, August, August 30th. People will be handing me everything, so I, I need to figure out what, what it looks like, probably chase a department or two, uh, and uh, have something uh, in a presentable form by the end of the week. All set. Thanks. 
and I'm also thinking part of the project coordination is going to be um, staying on top of the communication so that, you know, as things, meetings are held and things get done, that like a, a, an update is provided just to everybody, just keep sending it out and saying, you know, this happened, this didn't happen, this got delayed, so that, you know, no need to wait for scheduled meetings for that, that can just get pushed out. So then we also need to probably invite the school committee, or school superintendent to the department head meeting on the first. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What time? If she's, she, she's always invited. Yeah. yeah, what time is it? 11 o'clock on the Wednesday, the 1st of July. Okay. School, school department and uh, superintendent are always invited as is the finance committee on the select board. So, it's, this moves forward. Everyone just needs to know it's is fluid because this is being the first time I think this has been tried here. It's kind of needs to, people have to get used to it and figure out what's going on. So we need to just make sure we keep moving it the ball down the road. Work in progress. Well, exactly. We said we had dates on it, but this should be ongoing throughout the year. I mean, it's whoops, not something that really has a date on it. It's something for each month. Yeah. No, I better get bored. <laughs> you better start on next year. <laughs> so one of the other items in Ju in June is to talk about governance issues. So what I would propose is that the subcommittee is going to talk about the treasurer collector issue, that they kind of take the lead on that mm -hmm. because we're already kind of trying to change our look at whether our governance in those two departments is in the right spot. So that we've already said we're going to do it. We have the subcommittee for it. Um, I apologize, but we'll get invitations out and try to get a meeting date sometime so we can get this moving. And that would be you, the three of you. No, it's more than that. It's myself, Len, uh, Linda, Linda Dunleavy, um, Linda Sampson, uh, Joe Marcaria, Joe Marcaria, yeah, right. and then we have a resident, former finance committee member from uh, Middle Street or East Quadra. Street. Oh, yeah, right. Mr. Quadro. Yeah. Oh, nice. right. That's the, and then we have the treasurer. We have the uh, yeah, the treasurer and the treasurer and collector on that as well. Yeah. So that group, we will get to try to get together and start that. And we'll let that be the kickoff for the, the this govern, governance discussion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yeah, after when did that get formed? We formed that like uh, I didn't remember a while ago. Like April? On board. No, we, we had a... I think it was right after the election, wasn't it? No, it was, it was before, before the election. Oh, wow. It was January, February. I'm flying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that was one of those little things that fell by the wayside. Mm -hmm. uh, <coughs> we started doing budget. Got buried. We did. Okay, so is there anything else on our proposed schedule for now we want to? Can I slip something in? Uh, no, no. Nothing smoking or anything like that, but it's a, uh, a countdown calendar to the uh, October town meeting. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, and I need to I need to notify some folks before too long, and so I need. Do they have? No. If, if you if we could talk about oh. that, and then I can give it to them once you endorsed it. So countdown calendar for this uh, fall special town meeting with the target date of October twenty second is the date. That's the third Thursday in October. Uh, July first, the warrant is open with a. Deadline of August 27th. Uh, August 27th, the select board closes the warrant. Uh, September 2nd, review of the warrant. Uh, September 30th, Finance Committee, CPA, Capital Committee recommendations are complete. Uh, and we send it off for Town Council for review. Review is uh, completed on October 7th. Last day to post and publish the warrant two weeks in advance is October 8th. And then October 16th, the motions are distributed to the select board moderator. All of this, and then we're off to the races. October 22nd is the special town meeting. Yeah. When's Halloween this year? <laughs> October 30th. 
Is it always the 30th? No. It's not, it's not always, it's always a Thursday, but not necessarily the... Uh, the 26th? The same one? The third Thursday. The third or the fourth? Okay, I'm good. It's the fourth Monday. Uh, it's the fourth Monday. Oh, they changed that, didn't they? No. Yeah, the first is history. Oh, yeah, it is the fourth one. Thursday. 29th. Okay, fourth I'm good. Thursday. You never know what we're going to discuss. You never know. <laughs> Trick or treat. <laughs> So we are holding it on Halloween night now. No, the 22nd. 22nd? 22nd. 31st. Oh, 31st is Halloween. Okay. So I'm okay with the schedule. That's fine with me. All right. And everybody else? There's a typo in it. I'll clean it up uh, and I'll send it around. So here we are. John, you okay with it? Yeah, it's fine. Choice? Okay, so. So then um, the only other one item on the June little calendar I want to talk about was the wage, salary and wage survey, personal policies update. We have that work started with the personal policy updates, mm -hmm. so I kind of want to make sure we keep that part moving. I have a meeting, um, Joan was on vacation this week and just yep. set up with David to wrap it up on the uh, 23rd, the personnel policies. Okay. And then the question is, how do we, we keep going back to the salary, salary wage study. What are we willing to accept for the salary wage study to, to move along from this? Are we willing to accept the FROG, Franklin Regional Council of Government, FERCOG? FERCOG? What's the genesis of this survey being done? This was a, the, the discussion that we wanted to make sure we were paying in the right area and that we weren't underpaying or overpaying. That's kind of how it came about, if I remember correctly. Market value. We were struggling with how to take an objective look at the budget when we're not even sure when salaries make up such a huge part of the budget. And how do we know if what we're spending is the right amount? Would it make sense to... If you're under contract, how are you going to affect it? Because not, without knowing, in general, what that position's worth, you're just adding 2% to it like you did for the last 10 years. How do you know if you're not overpaying? Well, most of you, most of your, we're most concerned with non-union personnel because most of the time you're union personnel certainly know what the job market is out there. And when they come to the table, they usually have their own analysis of surrounding towns and what people are getting. That's usually where negotiations go. Um, but your non-union personnel, are they within the market value of what they're being paid? And that's usually the people that I think we've had some difficulties with, correct? I think that's really the focus, and at least starting the focus there. Yeah. And this is also part of the, you know, kind of long-range planning because to the extent we identify whether we can afford it or not, right, but if we identify an area where we may be at risk for significant turnover because we're not in the ballpark relative to pay scale. I think exactly. it's important for us to know that. It doesn't that. matter whether it's union or not union. Right. It's the position, whatever it is. And they both should be addressed. Yeah. So I'm just wondering, would it make sense? Because, um, again, the worst thing that can happen is we go off and say, yeah, go ahead and get this done, and then people aren't happy with the deliverable. So to your which point. Which can happen. Which can happen, likely will. So would it make sense um, for us to get a copy of what the FERCOG has to offer first and see just look at it. Look, look at it and see if everybody's comfortable with it and then decide. Do they have um, comparisons on there? Well, what I'm wondering is they may have like a certain format down, but there may be a couple of towns or something that we find I think more relevant. We could actually tap the uh, Hampshire, Hampshire County, County and see, see what their analysis is of, our, of the ones that are in Hampshire County. Right, because we've used theirs before, but right. I know that their level of information is different from what is in the FERCOG. Mm -hmm. Maybe we could just look at both of them. Both of them, yeah. All right, so I'll get copies of both. Mm -hmm. 
and that should go to finance for sure so too. Have information in it talking about the positions so that we know that we're comparing apples to apples. Right. Yeah, but you also may have to go investigate more of that right. apples to apples because if you use the we also use the MMA survey because there are some communities that are in Franklin and Hampshire that we might be able to use their MMA study. Mm -hmm. You still gotta look and see and, and then we're gonna also have to look at our our personnel policies, you know, maybe we don't pay as much, but we give more time off. Or maybe our benefit package is we're paying 75, I don't know what this is. 65. So we're paying 65% of your health care, where the other community we're comparing to is paying 50% of their health care. So yeah, there, once we come down, then we're going to have to go back in and figure out a few of these other things to balance it out, because it's not... Because we do a compensation study, as what we were talking about before, those other pieces fall in as well. Time off, health care, dental, uh, personal days. How many days do you get off when the school's out? How many days do you get off? Mm -hmm. I was yeah. waiting for you to hit me. I'm going to. Uh, those are the things that are in the compensation study. And if we just look at salary, we're looking at job and what they do in the job and what they're paid for that job. Yeah, yeah, the difference is you got salary, you're talking salary, but then you're talking benefits. Yes. It goes in the same you shouldn't, package. You shouldn't buy them together, should you? Yes, well, yeah. it goes together. Sure. If somebody paid 100% of their insurance and somebody else paid 50%, yeah. then it certainly is an impact on what the salary is. If the salary is within a dollar, but they're paying um, $68 a week for uh, their insurance policy, then you got to weigh them both. When you're doing the analysis. Yeah. Just yeah. your yeah. total compromise. Yeah, because it's apple. It's not apples to apples, but it's fruit to fruit, so let's figure out what's going on. Because we get uniforms and stipends and uh, a ton of stuff with the contracts. But those are the union contracts and I don't see I don't see any changes, you know, occurring with that. Well, I don't think we're looking necessarily at that per se. We're looking at more non union jobs and what that entails. That's where we've had some backlash in the past is people um, expecting a different salary than what they're making and not getting their steps and I mean it's a whole thing plays into it on uh, between elected officials and non-elected officials I mean so you have you know you're running the whole gamut here on what 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 you pay out so I hear us all saying we're okay with starting with maybe just the wage study part where we use the Franklin County information, the Hampshire County information, and maybe grab some of the MMA information mm -hmm. and, and take that to start with. And, and take a look at it and comment and say this is sufficient, you know, or whatever each individual thinks is sufficient, or it appears there's a gap here. And if everybody's kind of leaning towards their, there's a gap, and I don't know what it would be, but if, if everybody's leaning towards that, then that's something we may want to get working on soon you know, using university students or something to fill the gap so we're not holding off and then going, oh, we can't use this come October. Not that that would happen. Okay. Anything else on that? No. So, do we want to talk to you more about this? We kind of taken three pieces of this mm -hmm. to move forward. Do you want to take another piece? Do you think we're I think we should just start off with that. With that at this point, just so we can get our feet under us before you kind of throw anything else into that. It's a lot to take in and entail until you, I think you have to move step by step and not take it all in at once. Mm -hmm. If we can at least get this started, then that's a start. Yes. I mean, actually, it all, come, it all does come together. It's it's just doing it and getting yes. it. All right, so we have 10 minutes left for the tri-board meeting. Is there anything we want to talk about the... Um, what's the first public forum that you have in July? Well, my guess is that will probably be one of those items that slips a bit in the schedule. So the, the idea was to, once we kind of had our act together and everybody was in agreement, like, yeah, we know this is what we're going to do, that... Um, we would then go to the town and just say, look, you know, we want to inform you of the process that we're using this year and, and maybe start by providing some high level historical information about Hadley. Um, 
just to get the community engaged to a point because there may be some really good questions or ideas that come from the public to say, well, while you're going through the process, has anybody thought about the X? Has anybody thought about Y? Yeah, we'll get all the emails tonight. So that's really Give the Joyce's process. home phone number. <laughs> be yours. That's related to the current inventory. Having that where, where the town is. Strengths, strengths witnesses, yeah. other. Mm -hmm. Anything else? So then, just so we have, we've kind of started extrapolating out the next. We did a five year budget, we've approved 2016. Um, we need to talk about maybe adding another year onto this budget to go to 2019, 2020. Okay. Uh, actually, we need to do two more years. We want to keep our, our five-year budget projection going that we, went, that we started working on. Um, so the question would be, how do we, does anybody have any so thoughts? Is, can I ask, is the 2016 projected, I didn't have to look at it, is that what was voted at town meeting or not? Right, so the, uh, on the expenditure side, I went through the town meeting votes and made sure that those were up to date. Um, and uh, I also included the most recent cherry sheet information from the Senate budget. Now they're in conference committee, so this cherry sheet is gonna change once again. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, I thought we should know where we are if we were to freeze the budget at this point. But this is annual town meeting plus the cherry sheet information. One thing that would be really helpful, I think, is um, just going through and making sure that any assumptions used in these figures are documented. I mean, obviously, if a blind item is staying flat, well, that's, that's pretty obvious. But, um, you know, just maybe just documenting where some of these numbers came from. Particularly well, when are we going to have numbers. the actuals for 15? Well, we, we actually should have the end of the month. Uh, the last warrant is July 10th, uh, so mm -hmm. we'll have uh, actuals towards the end of July. I'd like to see the accuracy from the projected to the actuals on 15. Yeah, mm -hmm. now we'll know what direction we're rolling in. <clears throat> well, we'll see it then. Well, some of the some of the revenue we do have the actuals already, so if you wanted to. Mm -hmm. We don't have a crystal ball here. And Jerry, in uh, July on the calendar, the proposed calendar there? Well, I guess it's the, it's the calendar now. The detailed review of FY15 actuals versus budget and possible impacts on FY2016 town meeting budget is one of the things that we should be covering at a board meeting in July. We might, we might do that in August. Or it may be in August. In August. Just the way the accounting goes. Okay, well, that, that's some of the refinement we can work on. Well, hopefully, hopefully Hadley's doing better than I am. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, going so through. I'm not sure. I'm just looking at the expense numbers, so they don't match what I had for town meeting, so. They should. They don't. This says 15875, and town meeting was 15914. So, I just. So where are you? 15875, the total, the grand total for expenditures. Oh, the, the bottom line. Yeah. yeah. Oh, the bottom line the, uh, for two reasons. One of which is the enterprise funds are not in there. Uh, and the state assessments, which are not, um, which are not uh, voted by town meeting are in there. That's the reason why the bottom line is not what, what is there for voted. See, so the water and sewer are not included in this summary because that's the way that you wanted the, this presented. You didn't want you didn't want the non-general fund information in there. And then, uh, if you look at series 800 on the second page, state and other assessments, mm -hmm. those are not voted by town meeting, and so they don't appear on your town meeting mm -hmm. uh, summary. So to the point about documenting assumptions, we should also reconcile it to the town meeting. Just so that, because otherwise this question will just keep coming up over and over and over yeah, again. Yeah. Okay. 
So that should be easy, right, to show those. Mm -hmm. So when we so in the in the email that I sent around, uh, I have the first two summary sheets here, but that email has many many pages on it, and it has the departmental details, uh, and those departmental details should show okay. their correspondence to the town meeting vote. So, okay. So one of the things that I noticed going through here, um, doing the update on the departmental uh, details, was that the departments were asked to do a five-year budget projection with documentation. Uh, and again, I think we're running into the same problem as we had with the capital, is that many of the major department heads are no longer here. And we may have different recommendations coming out of our department heads. So I could force, I can see us going back and revising all of the information and adding for the next two years in order to have a, a projection forward. I'm not really sure if that, uh, I'm kind of of the opinion that we should just project, project out 2020 and 2021 based on what we are now. Okay. And then when we have our discussion, then you can, I mean, if this is our baseline, we hold to this is our baseline, and then we have a discussion about what our strengths and weaknesses are, and then say we need more, and then we can see what the cost, then we know what the true cost is. If people are sliding it in before we actually agree to what the strengths and weaknesses are, it'll throw this off a little bit. We won't be able to show the full picture. Yeah, I agree. I think they'll be frustrated to just go ahead and update it now and then have the discussion after. Okay. So for maybe for 2020 and 2021, the easiest thing to do is just take a fixed percentage and add to it for now, just to give us some numbers and growth figures and document that this is just a fixed increase for 2020 and 2021, just so we know that. And then we have sort of a, a number that's five years out that we go, oh, oh, that's a big number. That's why I want to see the accuracy of 15. If we're nowhere near what the numbers are projected to be, I can't see just plugging in a percentage for the sake of plugging in a percentage. I'd rather understand how we're doing versus what our projections are, and let's rectify it right now before we ask people to put together an extra couple years worth of documentation for it, or before we just start plugging numbers in. Yeah, I think we can forego 2020 and 2021 until after the discussion in August about the cash, free cash. If you want to. I personally kind of like to keep it, but if we want to have just do it, the way it is, that's fine. Yeah. We'll just keep with the three years we have. So we have a three year projected budget. Right now. Yeah. All right. And, and, and if you're dead on with the projections for 15 and where we are with it, then I absolutely agree with you. Well, we're not dead on. Well, so I'm, that's what I'm afraid. No, we're way, we're not dead on. I mean, snow and ice this year throws us off anyhow. No, but I think when we were going through the 16 budget, we saw things that were estimated in the 15 budget that were not. Right. And and brought it into the and we corrected, corrected it. it. Yes. 16. Okay. okay. Wow. We got two minutes before we're we're done. Do we, we had set the uh, July first. one, the first. first first Wednesday of them. So we the select board will meet again on the next week, next Wednesday, and then we'll. Next Tuesday and next Wednesday. Well, we have a formal select board meeting next Wednesday. We have a meeting with the planning board the Tuesday before that meeting. Well, so, it's scheduled. It's not a. Yeah, it's scheduled. It's not a, a formal meeting for us. Post it. So, if there's an issue with having the tribe board on July 1st, the like, time to bring it up would be between now and and our next select board meeting, and then we'll just try to rearrange it. That planning board meeting's at seven, right? On the yeah. 16th. Yeah. I don't know when in the agenda where the roads discussion is, though. It's first know. on the agenda. Lisa. Okay. 7.15. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming. Uh, can I just uh, remind the Finance Committee we're getting close to the end of the fiscal year. We have the inevitable line item transfers and transfer requests for the, uh, from the reserve fund. Uh, so. If you could just take a look at that or maybe get in touch with me and we can talk about how that uh, So did that, was that something that was emailed to us? 
It was something. It's something that we're trying to organize right now, and we'll get that information to you. Okay, so there's nothing to look at yet. But you're yeah, there's one send. request down in your box right now, but the select board are going to act on two more requests, and I know that Board of Health, Street Lights, mm -hmm. uh, maybe com mm -hmm. communications uh, center uh, are going to also have some requests. Well, they need to get them in. Yes, I know. <laughs> Thank you very much. Good night. All right, seven o'clock. So let's start our select board meeting a little bit. So we have the meeting minutes from June third. So any discussion? Second. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, we need to approve warrants 99, 52A, 52, and 52S. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, so 7 o'clock we have our second public comment session on our agenda. So is there anyone here who would like to uh, address us in our public comment session? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, Jerry, at yeah, the previous meeting, uh, you, right, you said that uh, we should get the hall painted uh, while we're doing the floors. Uh, did you go any further looking into that? Uh, or was that brought up by somebody else? It was brought up by me, and I was told, uh, or it was discussed at that point in time, that for fear of the budget running over on the asbestos removal, that they wanted to hold off a little until uh, we had it absolutely finalized, and then we could discuss it. Because we were meeting with the fellow that's doing the uh, tile, and uh, to check with him and see if it would be feasible at that time to have somebody paint a long and not interfere with them. Our concerns were that if we had uh, somebody, uh, if we, if I hired a painter to come in and do painting, and it conflicted with that guy, that could cost us some serious money back here. No. So we just want to stay ahead of that to make sure that there was no conflict between the tile guy and the paint guy. And if there is a paint individual that's recommended, I am, you'll be the first to know. Thank you. That's a question I came up, so thank you. Any other public? So just clarification on that. We have gone out to get the prevailing wages on the um, on the painting. We've shared that with the building committee. Uh, we were developing a, a bid for the painting. Uh, I know we were looking at uh, labor from the, from the county. Yes, from the county. Uh, and uh, are we are we doing something different now? Excuse no. Me, excuse me. I don't mean to the, I think what this says in there. Uh, we're going to be spending eighty to ninety thousand dollars to do a beautiful job in this building of floors. We're going to go out and get some painters. We're not painters to come in and trim out a nice job that we just had done. Uh, I think we're a little foolish. Yes. So a reputable painter that works with reputable contractors, not somebody who will work for nothing just to get the day off. So no, we have not changed the plan. Okay, thank you. Okay, anybody other comments? Did you have any? Excuse me. Did you have any discussions with the the floor tile guys regarding the painting? Uh, that's coming up uh, the first of the week. Okay. Uh, I believe it's Tuesday morning. He'll be here, and that's when uh, Tim, a couple of us, will discuss it with him. Excellent. If it's possible to put the two together. Thank you. All right, since no other public discussion, let's get into something. We worked really well. First time, so yep. second time. We'll get two next time. Okay. All right, so let's go to old item number two. So Mass DOT is still doing the work on Route 947, and when they were here last time to talk to about the temporary easements, they forgot to ask us to say that the work will have no, that, as far as we know, the work will have no detrimental and long-term impact on the uses of these buildings and the land. 
And so we have to concur that they believe there'll be no long-term use or no long-term detrimental effects on the building or the uses. Well, we hope it doesn't. Uh, yeah, we're gonna hold them to it. Yeah. So, is there a motion to agree with them? I'm sorry, forgive my ignorance. Is this like standard operating procedure? Yes. Okay. Yeah, if, we, if we actually have the plan, and the plan shows that, if the plan were to show that the easement was gonna, and usually it only happens when you have permanent easements, but the temporary easements are, don't usually happen, but if there's a permanent easement that was gonna go into the ball field and call those, cause you to lose half the ball field, that would be a problem. And since it's an Article 97 property, you'd have an issue with having to adjust it. This building's historical, so if you affected the historic aspect of this building, you'd have to, they would have to mitigate that. That's what we're, but we're saying none of this work is gonna do anything to the property. We hope so. Well, we, we anticipate. We anticipate. Well, they actually say it. They don't anticipate it at all. So we need to agree with their assessment. And we need to do that tonight, not wait until they're in here next week? Yes. They, they asked us to do that now. All right, I'll make a motion to approve as presented. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Oh. Discussion? Do you ever receive that letter from him for. Uh, Digging up Route 9 for flowable fill that they agreed to in the meeting here? <coughs> yep, I did. And uh, the compaction that they want and the standards that they want are pretty stringent. You'd have to have an engineer there at all times. Next week when they are here, we can bring that up and talk to them about it. Oh, you have the letter in your yes. hand from them? I don't have it with me, no, but I have it, yes. Could you give us a copy for our packets for next week so we know what it says? All right, so we have any more discussion about this? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Oops. No business. So, let's, let's go into the new business number two, DCR acquisition of land. So the Department of Conservation and Recreation, DCR, is announcing that they are informing the, us that they are looking at a piece of property. It's 3.75 acres on the range. And uh, DCR and the Kesswell Land Trust are looking to purchase this property. And this is just an announcement that they are Blows looking to do. my mind that they're buying steep terrain and it's 3.75 acres. Yeah. I kind of want to look at it and get for it here and pay for it. But, um, so this is just a notification, public notification, and announcement mm -hmm. to the public they're doing this. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So noted. Yeah. We have to move it to where it's now. No, you just have to make that announcement, and there's a form for choice to sign. Do we have to read this one. This is a big announcement. We have to read that. That's all. I don't think you need to do anything okay. more than what you've done. All right. I didn't think so either. All right. So Joyce will sign that. All right. The one that's in my packet, are you going to own? I have another one you can sign. So we're working for 715. We'll be with you. All right. So let's discuss the water. Do we want to discuss water division staffing, or are we going to wait? Let's do it. Uh, we may not need to discuss it right now. OK. Take it off? No, no. I'm waiting for the. Mr. Nixon, do we need to discuss? No, you don't need to discuss it. It's off. All right. We need to do a budget adjustment for the town clerk for the extra election. $600. So, so are we doing the snow and ice at the same time? Yes, please. OK. So, so that's for the 23rd. So is there a second? Second. Okay, so this money is just coming from where to go where? Okay, so we're asking for two reserve fund transfers, one for that late uh, April storm that we didn't uh, have enough time to adjust the annual town meeting budget to cover. That's $1,156. And then the town clerk, because of the extra election, which is coming up on June 23rd from noon to 8 over Hopkins Academy to approve the police cruiser for $42,000 and the school bus for $65,000. She needs an extra $600 in order to 
fund that election. Do you have money there? So this is, they're asking for the money from the reserve, reserve fund? fund. Reserve. So it's not coming from any other accounts? Not yet. Okay, so that's where it's coming from. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, so at our next meeting, we'll be talking about uh, our annual appointments. And in your box, you've got a <coughs> list of the appointments we need to make. So are there any, any questions right now? Because we this is something to, that we'll bring up next meeting. System? Yes, that thing. And we're only going to be appointing those who expire um, this year. All right. Anything? Any questions? No. Oh, okay. That's okay. All right. So our last. Well, not our last. Number six, new business. So we do have the meeting on the 16th to talk about acceptance of private ways with the planning board. So I plan to attend. Um, I do. I think I can make it. Yeah. I so, think I can make it. So we're all going to make it? All right. So I guess there's quite have, a... Have they found any other ones that are... Yeah. You could list in your book. The list is right here, yeah. Yeah, they have... Oh, okay. I got it. So Holly, Honeypot, Laurel, Redsmiths Road, Bayberry, Gooseberry. And then private roads that are not plowed by the town of Birch Meadow, Berkway, Golden Court, Greenleaves, Hockham, Westgate. So it's quite a bit. Um, I guess it's hand up. I believe you mentioned Birch Meadow not being plowed. That's what they have it on here as. We do plow Birch Meadow, that's on this Rocky Hill. Yeah, we, I thought we did. Oh, that came up at a previous meeting. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so we don't plow the other four, Burke Quay? No. Nope. Golden Court? Nope. Green Leaves? Nope. You would probably lose a truck if you plowed Green Leaves last summer. Hockenham Woods? Nope. Westgate Center? Powell Private, no. What is, what's that other one over there in Hockenham? That's private. Oh, I know where you mean. Brand new. What's his name? Doug Cole built that. I can't think of the name of it right now, but I know. But that's right. not Woodlot. Woodlot. Woodlot's not on Woodlot. Woodlot's not on here? And it's a private way, right? Yes. Yeah. There's no houses on it yet. Yeah, yeah there's, 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 there's houses. Yeah. yeah. But it was set up as a private way. Mm -hmm. Okay. Bayberry and Gooseberry weren't set up to be transferred at some time as a public way. I mean, their bills are surprising. standard. They walk it all the time. Talk about Tuesday night. Where is Red Smith's Road? Just sorry, across from uh, right down on uh, 47 Head uh, right South. Right next to the Spice. spice oh, that yeah. you went right there. Yeah. Right, go down to the river. Yeah. To the trailers. To the trailers. Trailers down. I can probably find some, yeah, somebody who's showing where that goes. Yeah, okay, so that'll be on the 16th. Really I don't know. Why don't you put it? Except by the I'll see for the elderly, Tom So, not most property. I don't know. Where's that? Golden Court. Golden Court. Golden Court. Oh, and Berkeley. Berkeley. Huh? And Berkeley. And Berkeley. It's state owned. It's, it's just the owned. housing authority owns it, right? Yeah, it was yeah. a housing authority. Yeah. And if there was a tremendous amount of snow, which we have done, you probably realize this too, Willie, that we have the snow back and the snow banks, but they yeah. had a maintenance person do that, and now they don't have that maintenance person anymore. I believe it was uh, uh, Harry Barksdale, I believe, that did it last. I don't know who's doing it now. Uh, yeah, that's. We haven't picked anybody yet to do it, right? But I was just wondering because it's uh, healthy housing for animals. Well, it's it's not that way in other communities either. I mean, <laughs> Northampton. Yeah, just a question. I didn't, I didn't yeah. Northampton falls around. Housing Authority. The Housing Authority does it, not the town, city. And Amherst doesn't plow the Housing Authority in Amherst. It's done by the Housing Authority. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's just something the way the Housing Authorities are set up. And Greenleaf is the same. State subsidized. But Greenleaf isn't the Housing Authority property. 
It's a private. It's a private it's development. Private. Yeah. Okay. All right. So that's what we're talking about on the 16th. Mm -hmm. Anybody want to join us there? Welcome to join us. You might want to get an email correcting birch metal being plowed to over to them before the meeting next week, please. Yep, be somewhere. Okay, so let's 715. We need to get going to our continuation of our dog hearing. So is everybody here? Dog hearing. Everybody's still under oath. Go ahead and do your thing. Everybody's still under oath. Okay. So I understand there was a meeting with the dog officer. How did do you want to? Well, we only met with him outside when we were here. And he said he was going to give you. So what I did is we went and we got, there was a list of things on that paper that you could have, like get insurance. So I did that. You you follow? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So so I went and I want. Do you want to see this? No. <laughs> okay. So there was that, and he said, you know, make sure if you take the dog out, you muzzle him. And then I went and I. Um, a friend of mine has a great Dane, and he, you guys talked about, you know, if he's outside, have him be in a lock pen. So I have a picture of a lock pen that I want to purchase, but I just want to, you know, run it by, you know, what's going on here. Okay. Nice. Right, so, yes. I believe with the what the dog officer was talking about last week, and what your agreement was, was that they would abide by the Mass General Laws for the containment. Of the dog, yes, not something that he randomly purchases. No, well, that's what it well, is. Well, well, that's well, 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 not back and forth. Okay, okay. You're talking to me and us. Oh, all right. Thank you. So the Mass General laws say that it, it would be, you know, secured floor. You'd have to have a secured floor, a secured top, and you know, for all four sides. Okay. And that's what you know. That's what I'm looking at. This is a top two too. All right. So, did you have anything else you wish to add to the? Hearing. Other than it's supposed to be buried two feet into the ground, according to the law. No, as long as whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> you want to read it? You want to read the law? No. <laughs> okay, so we had a recommendation from our dog officer. Um, so the dog officer, officer would like to suggest that we first make a determination if the dog is dangerous or not, in, in accordance with Master General Law, Chapter 140, Section 157. So based on what we've heard, um, do we, as a select board, feel we need to make a determination of dangerous, dangerousness for this dog? Yes. Yes. What does that entail? Um, that determines that the dog is considered dangerous, and then we have to then make a decision on what to do next to okay, the dog. Thank you. Are you doing a roll call vote? So is there a motion to I just heard two yeses. Yeah, I'll make a motion. That we determine the dog is dangerous based on the testimony at the hearing. Yes. Is that on prior record? Okay. And there's a second. Yes. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And I'll abstain because I wasn't at the June 30th. Okay. okay. So 401. So based on that determination, what the dog officer now recommends is that the dog be humanely restrained, provided, however, that no. Okay. That the dog be humanely restrained, provided, however, that no order shall provide that a dog deemed dangerous be chained, tethered, or otherwise tied to an inanimate moving, inanimate object, including but not limited to a tree, post, or building. That the dog can be confined to the premises of the keeper, provided, however, that confined shall mean securely confined indoors or confined outdoors in a securely enclosed and locked pen or dog run area upon the premises of the owner or keeper. Provided further that such pen or dog run shall have a secure roof, and if such enclosure has no floor be secured to the sides thereof, the sides shall be embedded into the ground not less than two feet, and provide further that within the confines of such pen or dog run, a dog house or proper shelter from the elements shall be provided to protect the dog. Fourth, or third, that when removed from the premises of the owner or the premises of the person keeping the dog, the dog shall be securely and humanely muzzled and restrained with a chain or other tethering device having a minimum tensile strength of 300 pounds 
and not exceeding three feet in length. That the owner or keeper of the dog provide to the licensing authority or animal control officer or other entity identified in the order information by which the dog may be identified throughout its lifetime, including but not limited to photographs, videos, veterinary examination, tattooing or microchip implantations, or a combination of any such methods of identification. So based on the, our determination that the dog is dangerous, the dog officer recommends that these conditions be placed upon the dog in the town. And, in closing. That's if, that's if we actually decide this. Uh, well, that's what he suggested, so. Yes, after we, if we decide to do this, then we have to tell him they have that. So is there any more discussion? Any discussion? So moved. Is there a second? Is there any concerns from the dog's owner about this? Well, I'm just going to you know, talk to the dog officer because what it says in the law, it says that um, the floor, if it's not attached to a floor. That's what it says here. Yeah, wait a minute. If it's not attached to a floor, then it has to be two feet That's what it said. He just read that. Yeah, yeah. right. So, so if we put a floor, Correct. we're all set. Correct. As long as it meets the, the law. Yes. Yeah. Correct. Okay. So if there's a top, a side, and a bottom. We're good. In accordance with the rules, yes. And I would like um, Officer or Sergeant Cook to um, examine the yeah, that would be great. The, uh, the National facility. Yeah. Yeah. Any comments, concerns? No. Well, you're okay. You're okay. So we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So, uh, we passed this, and you have 10 days, if you so decide, to appeal this order to the Eastern Hampshire District Court in Belchertown. So, probably tomorrow, I'll find like Officer Coke. Yeah, I'll go, Sorry. go over to the police station, and I'll tell him what we're thinking of doing, and if he says that works, fine, and that's what we'll do. If he says, no, you gotta do something else, and then that's what we'll do. Okay. But I want to yeah, run it with him because he, he's the one that will inspect it. Yeah. He will. He'll be the one bringing you back if something goes wrong. Right. Yes. Okay. So I'll, I'll go, we'll go talk to you. Did you say you got insurance as well? Yeah, I got insurance. Yeah. Did we get a copy of that? Uh, yeah, that's a really good thing. Actually, I tell anybody who's what? got a dog they should have insurance. What's, what's the liability on that? Oh, it's it's up there. It's like 500000 So we have to call that Yeah, personal liability, 500000 Close the hearing. I'll, I'll provide uh, the judges with a copy of what was just adopted and we'll follow up with a formal letter uh, so that you have uh, all the information that you need. But uh, yeah. please accept this. According to that chapter in section of the law, it's only $100,000 minimum you need on it. Yeah, but it, it came okay. out. It was, I, honestly, if I had known in general, no matter what dog you have, it was like a hundred dollars more a year on homeowners because any dog, you know, like I told you, I got bit by a standard poodle. Yeah. You know, it, it can happen to anybody. My sister got bit by a little lapso or whatever, so you never know. You said, John? Yeah. Okay. No, I was just, I kind of read through this thing. Okay. Okay. So we have to actually, enough. we need a motion to close the hearing. I'll make a motion to, but I want, um, Bridget, do you want to take a copy of her? Well, I know that um, the police department would, would require a copy of that. Sergeant Cook said he would okay, want a copy so on file, so I would assume we could get it from them. Oh, you want me to give him a two? Okay, I'll, I'll do all we'll of that. Would yeah. you talk to him? I'll... Yeah, I'll show him this and I'll show him this. Okay. See what yeah. he says. So do I have a motion to close the hearing? A motion to close the hearing. Second. Any okay, discussion about closing the hearing? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. And sorry for what happened. I hope this works out and yeah. takes care of all the issues. Me too. If it doesn't work out. If it doesn't work out, somebody's dog's going to die. And if it doesn't well. work out, they'll be back here. <laughs> okay. So, well, we use. Uh, do we want to talk about old business or change the plan? Consent calendar? Consent calendar. So go ahead, Molly. 
you want to talk about from your proposal oh. that it's in Kelly? Uh, yeah, well, it was actually um, in conversation with Bridget. Um, and uh, based on some previous work experience, uh, Bridget was aware of the fact that some towns do have what's referred to as a consent agenda. Uh, very similar to what we've been doing the past couple of years, I think, at town meeting, where you can basically bundle somewhat perfunctory or administrative items, um, housekeeping, it, uh, we've referred to them as, um, and just vote them all at once, because oftentimes there's limited discussion. Uh, they've already been fully vetted and signed off on prior to getting there. So this is a way to uh, affect that same concept at our select board meetings, and rather than vote the town um, accountant's warrants and the minutes and you know go through specific items uh, licensing is also one of those items that many towns treat as a housekeeping item with the presumption being that the licensing um, responsible party has done their work but that would all be provided as part of the material to the select board so at the beginning of each meeting presumably we could just have a consent, consent agenda and vote that one agenda and it would encompass the licensing the minutes and um, appointments and, and yeah, appointments i mean again housekeeping items so uh, i think um, i couldn't personally i didn't see any reason not to do it um bridget who is now assisting us has experience doing it um, and clearly at any point in time if somebody has a question and they're uncomfortable or whatever they want clarification on something that's been provided in the book we'd still have the opportunity to ask so i couldn't think of a downside you just place a hold like you would normally on a consent agenda mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you would have all the documents to go with it so you'd see the whole packet so we had talked specifically on the licensing side. We'd see the, the, whole, the public, public safety signed off. And, mm -hmm. yeah. Do you have one of ours? Do we have a new stamp with everybody's name signature on it? It's, I don't have it yet, but we're getting it. And that, and that can be used for the annual appointments. Mm -hmm. So do we want to try this? Love to. Yeah, sounds good. OK, anything that makes us more efficient is good. So, so when we do this, it'll be in the book. It'll come out with the agenda. Um, you can pull, we'll be able to pull something off during the meeting, or you'll be able to let me or Bridget or Mr. Nixon know that she has more questions before the meeting. Yeah. And then if you and we bring up the consent calendar, if there's something you want pulled, you can pull it, and we'll put it back in the order. Mm -hmm. And that's it. That's how it'll work. That's all right. So, five, everyone in favor? Yep. Yes. Yeah. Right, we'll give it a try. Yeah. We have to vote. Oh, it's just a okay. Is there an administrative procedure in that uh, each consent agenda will be voted as as it comes along? Okay, so we don't need to vote to have the consent agenda. Just more of a housekeeping thing. Yeah, more than Okay. Last time before we go into executive session is our strategic planning discussion. So this is old business, or old business number one. We had a proposal for strategic planning and forecasting, and we kind of talked a little bit about some of this stuff, the tri-board meeting. But then we have more that we wanted to get into. Um, so Mom, I'm gonna throw it to you again. Sorry, I'm gonna throw it to you again. Um, okay. My brain is just kind of shot today. Really? Yeah. I, <laughs> I lost four hundred thousand dollars, so I was kind of a little tied to it. Personally or professionally? Professionally. Okay. We found it, but it took a long time to find it. Okay. Um, so, so these are just some of the other issues that were kind of ancillary to the budget. So, so you just want me to. So, uh, what we had talked a little bit about last time was trying to work towards uh, improving communication um, and specifically between the department heads, the town administrator, the select board, um, that would likely involve also discussing further the roles and responsibilities of the select board liaison positions, which we have decided to continue. So we want to talk a little bit more about that. 
and then how the select board interacts with town residents, um, and then things, you know, how to, if, when the uh, audit and management letter come out, you know, how that gets disseminated and other things of that nature. Um, we, I think I've already really talked about the multi-year budget process. Um, so to the extent we're going to try to pursue that, I think we've addressed that. But we do need to, I think, speak further about kind of the, the quality of the input accuracy. Um, you know, in, in dates, I think, pardon? Dates when we put things off. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Adhering to specific cutoff dates and the like. And um, also talked about lack of sufficient information to make informed decisions. Um, you know, it's my hope that we can continue to strive to be more data-driven um, in our analysis of information that's in front of us. And part of that um, is going, you know, is going back to the idea of board docs, so that we're not constantly flipping and trying to. Flip. I mean, we have a lot of really good information, but it comes in front of us in a very piecemeal fashion. Over a, and so then you're trying to remember when did we talk about that? Was it February? What was handed out? Or you have to wind up copying and recopying and recopying. So what do you think the timeline was on that. Uh, so uh, the board docs talked to me today, um, and we talked about doing a pre uh, presentation because I think uh, Slack and Divine is new and hasn't seen this uh, information. So we'd like to get together with him and do another presentation over the over the computer. Um, I have put into the funding request for the special town meeting the three thousand uh, dollars for uh, <coughs> board docs. So I think, you know, my thought is that a, a lot of this, um, with the possible exception of the role and responsibilities of the liaisons, we can um, perhaps address as we go, as we move down this, you know, roadmap, or uh, road to, to town meeting, the budget proposal that we've agreed to try to adhere to. Yeah, I think some of this is going to come up along the way. So part part of the communication issues is a matter of making sure that as we're going along, everybody's getting the same information and they're getting it in a timely manner and we're agreeing on who's communicating what and at home. Uh, I think we can wrap that into this new process and see how it goes. But I, I definitely think that last year there was an awful lot of frustration. Um, specifically with the department heads on um, not feeling that they were adequately informed or that they had different information than other people, the finance committee, that kind of thing. Yeah, they were. But I, and I don't necessarily know if that's true or not. Um, I feel sometimes that um, what they thought it should be isn't exactly what they were asked for. And, you know, I think Sometimes they they have a misconception of things too. So I, I think if we have something uh, concrete this year on what we expect, then you know that should not raise any concerns or any questions. Or this is what I thought I heard. This is what you should be hearing. So yeah, and sometimes it's a matter of making sure that you get you get positive acknowledgement and not just assume that somebody's on the same page mm -hmm. as, as you. So, you know, again, I think if we just maybe have this in mind as we go through uh, the budget process and we're, we're checking in all along the way, it will avoid a lot of that frustration. So let's talk about VADAR for a second and, and the use of, of VADAR. Are the numbers that, are, it, first of all, is it up and running and fixed and is everything right with it? Oh, uh, yes. Okay. So the planning, uh, the finance committee will have the exact same figures as the select board immediately because it's put into the VADAR formula, correct? VADAR is a decent accounting program. We're trying to make it work like a budget module, which it was never designed to do. So we do our best with it. Okay. Um, there are, there are th limitations to what VADAR can convey in the way of information. Uh, and it's one of the reasons why we produce a separate document which has um, the narrative and the, uh, the, the summaries and the department head details. That information should be the same between VADAR and uh, the, 
the budget document. So if everybody puts their information in on the AR, then we just probably need to set a time. I mean, if we say the snapshot, the, yeah, the, the, it's in here. At our next meeting, we're going to discuss this. Is this Wednesday? And that Friday before the meeting at ten o'clock, the numbers that are in there. That, what we're using? That's what, that's what we're using. Okay. Regardless of whether you change it between that time and Wednesday's meeting, but the numbers the, we discuss. But do the department heads enter it, or does Gail enter it into the accounts? Department heads uh, enter, the large department heads enter. Uh, I enter a lot of the small volunteer uh, departments uh, and, and our own budgets. Um, there is a period when VADAR is open for everybody to use, and then after that period, it becomes read only for the vast majority of the departments. So, come a deadline, everything should be set in stone. So, is, it, is read only a switch you put? Just, it's just go, something that Gil. Uh, so Gil can say. So that's that's probably the way to do it. Is, is mm -hmm. if we say this is the date, this is the time, ten yeah. o'clock on Friday. You turn the switch read only, and then you don't turn the switch to change the inputs until we, after our meeting, we say okay, these are things we're up to. The old that was great for Friday, but today's Wednesday, and we got new numbers this morning. Kills everybody here. Yeah, kills everybody. So we got to figure out a way. But that's to the pick budget. A point. That's the expenditures. That's things well, you're that asking come people to react. Your department. I know. You're yeah. asking people to react and put budget numbers together, and let's all have the exact same numbers, just like we did for fall town meeting, where we said, "Okay, I know new numbers are coming in, but these are what we we picked the point and then went with it from there." That's what we decided before we even got here, Jerry. We, we're working out the actual numbers right now, not any anticipated numbers or projected numbers. If we don't have it in our pocket, we're not going to spend it anymore. I just want. We're not going to say the state's giving us five hundred thousand dollars. I think we only only end up with one hundred twenty-five. Completely separate conversation. I'm just talking about picking the point where everybody's going to work hard to put a budget together, and let's stay with those same numbers. But but this is why Gail was is running it right now. So we're we're a lot closer than we used to be well, on the expenditure side and. Um, the rev uh, revenue and expense side. So in the spirit of closing that gap and making a lot closer exact, um, to David's point, there are times where the output from data may not lend itself to you know, a format from a management standpoint that we want to see the data. It, and I'm okay with that if, if we truly can't write the reports off of VADAR. But what we have to do is if we're going to be, I mean, actually a good example tonight, just the conversation with um, Lynn on the Finance Committee was asking, why doesn't this agree to the town voted budget? And David said, oh, but it does. Yeah, au contraire. It does, but you have to take this and this and this and add the three of them in. From this point forward, I think any financial information that we're receiving, absolutely, somebody needs to sign off, and it's probably going to have to be you, but whether it's through the town accountant, saying this agrees to the underlying general ledger system, VADAR. So we don't have a rogue management report where VADAR is fine, but you know somebody forgot to change a cell in Excel, and now we've got a difference between the two. So that validation is just a common perfunctory accounting practice that has to be adhered to at all times. And if there is a difference between the two numbers, then the details of that reconciliation as to why it doesn't agree to the source system, that has to be documented so we all know what we're looking at. So I think we're all in agreement here. So mm -hmm. as we move to the budget time, as we go forward, we just need to keep in mind we're going to set a date and we're going to probably set it multiple dates. The, the budget inputs will be one date. This is your budget input date. And then your budget isn't going to change from this point forward. And then it's going to be a, this is what the revenue, this is our revenue forecast projection. This is it. We're not going to change it from this point forward. So that, that's what we're all talking about. And we're all saying the same thing, I think, here. So as we move along, we'll just kind of move those dates and make those decisions. I'll we'll just have to do that. I'm not married to the beta either. I don't really understand enough about it. I'm just married to the point that we all are working on the same figures. Same numbers. Yeah. You got to have the same numbers. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So this is a kind of fluid fluid thing. You know, a couple of these items actually we've addressed in the tri board that we're actually working on wage study and those things. So integration of the capital plan. 
Great. Do we need to, uh, the roles and responsibilities of the um, liaisons to be? Do we want to just leave that fairly free flowing right now, or? I kind of think so. As we talk, as I actually talk to the departments, we do our mm -hmm. other thing we're doing, SWAT. Yep. Um, that that might be something where we actually refine the roles of the duties of the liaisons a little more. Because yeah. it might come up that that's something that they feel is something that needs to be. That's one of the weaknesses they see. Yep. Okay, any other discussion about this? No. All right. Oh, okay. well, no, one, other thing. one other thing I'd like to see <laughs> is um, ongoing update and status of major issues and projects. And it would be great to have, I think the way we do things now, we can talk about how I haven't had a chance to talk to David about it, but I think having some sort of a weekly update and it doesn't have to be in excruciating detail, but it would be really great if everybody on the select board got the same information. And I think right now what happens is the chair serves the role of the chair from an administrative standpoint. So there are obviously things that you know David's going to discuss, particularly with um, you know Guilford or whoever the chair is at a point in time. But then there are other things like uh, you know we know we're brewing or going on or whatever during the course of the week, you know, uh, the sewer. The sewer, yeah. <laughs> or, you know, Bay Road being shut down and that kind of thing. The easement on the property that we discussed last meeting has been resolved. And, yes. you know, that update was helpful when I got it from you, David. I appreciate it. Yeah. But I think what winds up happening is, you know, catch as catch can. Some, if it's something really important, David's going to reach out and call all of us individually. But a lot of times, like, hi, David, you know, it's my lunchtime. What's going on? So I'll talk to David for 20 minutes one day. You know, Joyce may stop in. And, you, and so if there was a way to think about getting it a formal but not, you know, taking 12 hours to do it update every week to just say, here's where everything stands, I think it would cut back on a lot of our bothering you. There was a time when the board asked me to produce a weekly summary of what was going on, and then the board got tired of it and ordered me not to do it anymore. Uh, so, or all, all five you faces that? on that board. <laughs> so many of the people are not here anymore, but uh, we can return to that. But uh, Just a one page, I think we'd be fine. Yeah, I mean, literally no more than one, just like yeah. all, it's like DPW, public safety, if, it, if anything came up. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't have to. Mm -hmm. Is that? I don't mind doing that. Uh, uh, you just email it to all of us. I was told to knock it off. Mm -hmm. Start it up again. Dave. Start it up again. Okay. You just email it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any announcements? Um, we have three Girl Scouts who are getting gold or silver awards, um, and. Uh, so we're going to be preparing uh, proclamations for them. If the board can uh, sign them before Tuesday, that would be very helpful. Sure. Uh, yep. Sounds nice. Congratulations. Who are they? Can we discuss that? Do we have the list here? I didn't know we were going to talk about I know um, there's a Cassandra, Cassandra Dwight. Um, I can go grab the list. Why don't you go grab the list while we're doing the, uh, the rest? Because we don't, certainly don't want to leave anybody on. Any other announcements? I have one quick announcement. Uh, I guess it's more of a, just want to congratulate uh, the Hopkins Academy boys varsity baseball team. I'm afraid that they have hit the end of the road um, uh, in their playoff quest. But uh, they had a great season, and um, good luck to all of the seniors in particular are moving on, and good luck to the underclassmen who will be continuing uh, a fine tradition next year. Congratulations. Any announcements? It's been a fine year. What's the score? 14 to 7. Oh, they were coming back. 14 to 7. You were checking out last week. I was going to leave the score. Everybody will be tomorrow. So. All right, and then congratulations for to the graduating seniors. Mm -hmm. Moving on, to wherever you're moving on to next, good luck. Um, how many are going into the service? Uh, at least one, for sure. I'm trying to remember who's there a second. Matt. Matt Pitt, for sure. Marines. Matt Pitt. 
And my apologies if there's something else that I'm not remembering. But no, it was they had that. They mentioned that as you spoke. The grandson's graduate. And they said that there were five young men that were going into the service. Please stand up. And they gave them an invitation for crying out loud. Never stopped. Yeah. It was really, really touching. Yeah. Nice. So the Girl Scouts are? The Girl Scouts are. Uh, receiving her gold award will be Rebecca Freitag. And the silver award winners will be Cassandra Dwight and Gabrielle Downey. Congratulations. Sure. Good Congratulations. Job. Being the father of a gold award, I proud and all proud the parents are. <laughs> it's like all right. being an Eagle Scout. It is. Mm -hmm. Very much. Yes. So do we have uh, a motion to go to our next items of business? Uh, make a motion to go into executive session for the discussion of union contract negotiations. Number one, dispatch collective bargaining unit and to also have a uh, personnel matter um, regarding a uh, DPW water division personnel. Is there a second? Second. As Chair of the High Select Board, I state that the Board has moved and second, seconded to enter into executive session, and I state that the discussion of the matter in open session would have an adverse effect on the Town of Hadley. We will not reconvene in open session if we do this. Roll call. Yes. Uh, so Devine? Yes. Maureen? Yes. John Glover? Yes. Keegan? Yes. Good night, everybody.